Welcome to the 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 140. Listen, shout out to everyone who is tuned in right here, right now. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Listen, this week tried to take me out. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know the seasons are changing and you know that means the sniffles are coming around, people sneezing and everything, catching it from everybody. And y'all, I'm not going to lie to you. It tried to catch me, it tried to catch me this week, but I'm not going to lie. I knew I had to see. It was a new week. I had to see my 116 family, so I made it through. So I'm gonna put y'all up on game right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna be on my Tony Braxton today because uh, I just want to make sure I don't. I got my throat coat tee. Shout out to uh, our producer Joe for hooking me up, making sure that we're all good for this week. And we're so happy that y'all are tapped in, y'all. Speaking of uh, speaking of Tony Braxton and amazing singers, listen, we have a great one this week, man. Uh, shout out to Ace. He is out this week, but he sends all of his love as always. But I'm I'm not solo. I have an amazing guest this week, man. I have Lee Vossi here on the 116 Live. Lee, what's going on, girl? Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Listen, thank you so much for being here. Of We're course. so happy that uh, you were able to stop by and be here. Um, listen, you've, you've been you've been the one. You've been the <laughs> one to like watch and you've just been killing it when it comes to just um, music and when it comes to just you releasing things left and right and billboard charts and like, and I've been reading write-ups about you. How has it been? been just taking all of those things in has it been happening fast like is it kind of blowing your mind talk to me what's kind of going through your mind these last couple of weeks months when it comes to your career and everything going on yeah definitely blowing my mind yeah. like a thousand percent um god has really been just like showing up in such a major exciting way yeah. um you know obviously faith without works is dead right mm. so i've been working a lot but just really so exciting to see uh the fruits and how people are receiving the things that have mm. been coming out and just seeing god work has been so fun listen I, it's been i can't imagine what that's like you know mm. what i'm saying because you work so hard you mm. put so much in and just being able to see the fruits of your labor it's just really really dope mm -hmm. you seem really driven I don't know mm -hmm. just like even just like seeing your social media like you know, this is our first time getting the chance to like really sit and talk we were able to meet mm -hmm. in passing here at reach yeah but just looking at your social media you seem real focused mm -hmm. like real driven just like let them making sure people know like the music is out the singles out making sure people are tapped in mm -hmm. um what's driving you and keeping you focused and driven lately um so honestly I had a word from God at mm -hmm. the beginning of last year mm -hmm. Um, to do music. I hadn't been doing music for probably like two years. I mm -hmm. was on a complete detox, like trying to figure out where I was going with it, what my purpose was, what God had for me, what God wanted for me and from me. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked God um, at the beginning of 2023, I said, God, what do you need from me? And I heard him say music. And um, so when I heard that, I didn't really know what to do with it. Like yeah. I said, I hadn't been doing it. I hadn't, I didn't have any plans, um, hadn't even been writing, wasn't even singing to myself in the car. Um, and um, God just ended up making a way for it to all make sense. And so when I started putting out this music, um, it was it was to go hard with it, mm -hmm. you know, um, and to just be obedient to the word that God had given me. And so, um, so yeah, that's what's driving it really. Okay. So I'm happy you dove into this because <laughs> I read that when you said you took time away from music and we're going to mm -hmm. get into like, you know, your early years where like you were in the arts at a real young age. But, yeah. and when I, when I read that you took time away, I'm, I'm curious, I really want to know why, like what, what mm -hmm. led you to not even wanting to sing in the car and things like that. Mm -hmm. What made you want to just not take a break from music for a little bit? I was suffering. Like I was in a really tough place um, with my mental health. Mm, okay. Um, just different things. Like nothing felt like it was going right. You know, um, I was just lost. Mm -hmm. And um, like you mentioned, like I had been in entertainment from such a young age. I started mm -hmm. performing at seven and got my first professional gig at nine mm -hmm. and um, really didn't know who I was outside of what I did. Mm -hmm. Right. Like outside of my contributions as a performer, my like elevator pitch. Right. Of yeah. like, you know, my resume and like what I've done and what I could do. Um, and so it just got to a place really where I. I, I was like I said, I was really struggling with my mental health. And I had a therapist that asked me that question. Who are you outside of what you do? Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't have an answer for that. Sheesh. Um, yeah, sheesh. Cause, and, and it was even more sheesh that I didn't have the answer. I was like, wait, 
like this, it really kind of rattled me. Um, and the pandemic happened and things just were getting really weird and rocky. And um, I really, I realized I needed to recalibrate and figure out the answer to that question. And so it was at that time that I really was leaning into the Lord and really trying to figure out what it is that um, he created me for. Yeah. And I thought that I was wrong about music being what I was created for. I was yeah. like, you know, because I realized that I had kind of made an idol out of success. Listen. In the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, God made it so that I was able to have some time with him. I, I had kind of an isolation period um, where I was just leaning into him. I was trying different things. I was, you know, I, I, I was like, you know what, God, if I was completely wrong about music being what, you know, I was supposed to be doing, like, fine. Like, mm -hmm. I surrender my life to you. I want you to show me what's, what's needed. Um, and then ultimately at the end of um, that kind of period where I did submit everything to the Lord, mm -hmm he came back and so clearly told me, no, like music was right, yeah. but just like do it different. Like do yeah. it for me though, you know? So, um, so yeah. Man, you said so much. Let me put my throat coat down because you <laughs> said so much just now. Um, that's so importantly, mm -hmm. only because so many people, and of course, like, you know, you can test this because of course you went through it. Mm -hmm. So many people find there, I had a moment like that where, my identity was in solely what I did. Yeah. And I was I didn't, like taking time to, for God to show that no, like it's not. Was it hard for you to even like to take those, take those steps away from music to, you know, like what, what was that time period like for you? Yeah. Um, it was humbling for sure because um, ultimately the reason why I, so I, I ended up, so I was living in Atlanta at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not from Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, but I was living in Atlanta and I had to go back home. Like I had to go back to North Carolina and that was a very humbling reality for me to like admit. It's yeah, like, it's yeah, not yeah. working out, sis. Like yeah. you need to go home, you know? Um, and so it was very humbling. It was difficult. Um, I felt like a failure mm -hmm. um, and I felt like, everything that I thought I knew about myself, like was completely just wrong, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, it was tough, but uh, again, it was, it was this kind of like, it was uh, a deconstructing to reconstruct mm, yeah. like period. Um, and so, and it ultimately ended up being the most beautiful thing that could have happened for me. But at the time it was tough, but I always had hope. I was like, you know, I know there's something on the other side of this. There's something on the other side of these struggles. Um, and I want to get to that point. Like I want to like my life again. Yeah. So if this is what's necessary for me to like this life that God created, even though I might not understand right now, like God yeah. created me for a reason um, and it's not to suffer. Right. Yeah. So let me just get through this. Let me humble myself, go home um, and really recalibrate. So yeah, it was a lot of kind of, it was a lot of spiritual warfare definitely at that yeah. time um, to just kind of keep going to get to the other side and believe that there is another side that's like worth working towards. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So how did you get your start? in music to begin with? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm the youngest of three and um, my siblings are also great singers. And so we would always sing in the house mm -hmm. and my brother, my oldest brother or older brother, I have a brother and a sister, um, but he uh, always was interested in the arts. And so um, my mom is from New York. So she was always uh, really interested in exposing us to like Broadway and, you know, mm -hmm. musical theater. Mm -hmm. um, and so she took us to um, the local theater in Fayetteville, the Cape Fear Regional Theater. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we would just watch the shows. And then my brother, Zach, was like, I want to be in the shows. And so I love my brother so much and I wanted to do what he did. Yeah, yeah. And so um, he would get me ready for auditions and, you know, uh, kind of be my vocal coach and like all of this stuff like when we were kids. And that's how I got involved in theater um, and performing, like I said, in a local capacity. Um, and then uh, and I was seven at the time when I started and it was a really good kind of training ground for me mm -hmm. um, because then when I was nine, my brother ended up looking for, he was looking for auditions for himself for yeah. Broadway shows, ended up finding one for The Lion King on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, and they were casting for Young Nala and the audition was actually in Atlanta. And so my brother was like begging my mom. He was like, you have to take her, you have to take her, but don't take her if you're not ready to move to New York because she's going to get it, right? 
And um, we came down to Atlanta to do the audition. There was like hundreds of other girls. There was an open call. I didn't have any agent or anything, Um, but I kept getting callbacks. And then I ultimately booked the role. Yeah. Um, So then we moved to New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I did the show for a year and a half. And it was really just, it opened my eyes up to the fact that this is something that I like to do as a hobby, but like this is also a potential, like real viable career path. And so um, from the time I was nine, I ended ended up getting um I ended up signing like with Wilhelmina like they were my Whoa. agents and stuff and um just like doing the whole like commercial circ like auditioning yeah. for stuff like um really really pursuing so it. you were in like the industry like for real yeah oh mm-hmm. that's crazy yeah and um and it was so fun and yeah I, I I loved it I learned a lot um about myself I learned about a lot about the world a lot of, uh, about different kinds of people and um but ultimately my favorite part of all of that was always singing like I always that was my favorite part of theater and um I started writing songs when I was 10 backstage at the Lion King Mm -hmm. I was really inspired at the time by um like Neo's music that was coming out like because of you like those kind of songs and I was really into like the singer songwriter thing I was like oh like I can write my own song. So um, I got a guitar for my 10th birthday and um, started, you know, writing songs that way. And so ultimately when I was like 16 is when I decided to focus on music because I felt like that was the space where I could really um, create my own kind of archetype as opposed to like having to fit into a role that somebody else created like I could kind of yeah yeah yeah. you know and I come from a multicultural background I'm Puerto Rican Dominican African American and so I came from a rich rich uh rich culture uh, culture and just like uh, appreciation for different Mm. kinds of music and I wanted to figure out how to bring all of that into you know who I was as an artist yeah and um so that's how I started focusing in on music and we would start coming down to Atlanta to work um, on music. So Atlanta's always been a really kind of important part of like my journey Um, being from North Carolina and also spending time in New York. Atlanta has always been like a really kind of pivotal place for me. And so um, I ended up going to college in New York and realized that New York was not for me (laughs) as an adult. Yeah. And um, ended up running into some just like stressful situations in college that I didn't necessarily know how to navigate Mm -hmm. and um ended up taking a year off and um ended up moving to atlanta after that Mm -hmm. and so that's how i ended up in atlanta in 2018 for the first time so you i think you said earlier that you finally answered the call god Mm -hmm. gave you to do music Mm -hmm. so what was it about what made you want to answer that call Mm -hmm. now at that moment opposed to like, what was the difference between the past? You were kind of like, okay, well you had your reasons why not to, but then when God said, yes, you were ready to go. That's a good question. I think that because I no longer, um, I no longer wanted the answer to be music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really open to whatever the answer was from God. Mm. Um, I wasn't looking for music to be the answer. And actually, when I heard him say music, I was like, no, like, come on, bro. Really? Like, you know, like, yeah, like, because I was kind of I was I was nervous about um you know, revisiting uh some some experiences that I had had that I needed to heal from, mm, okay, right? Okay. And I was like, no, God, like, I'm just now getting back. Cool, yeah. like, I don't know. Um, and so then when I moved back to Atlanta um, at the top of last year, everything just kind of started to flow. And there wasn't so much force and, you know, um, cause I really had given it all to him. Like I really had given my life to him. Um, and so that was the difference was that it was no longer about like my own ambitions. Um, and really just being obedient. So sheesh, that's so I, you keep making me want to put down this <laughs> mug because oh, Lee, you be saying so um you say so many important things that I just I resonate with, but even I just know people listening um resonate with just one being one, it's the nature of God. I was telling my friend this the other day. Mm-hmm. It's the nature of God for him to give us to lay the things in our lap that we don't want to do mm-hmm. or, like, or even the things the fact that we surrendered and we were that's one thing I, I love that you said that stood out to me is that you were open 
to Mm -hmm. whatever God had. And I'm not even surprised at the fact that he brought you back round Mm -hmm. to what you were like, okay, I want to do this, but God, whatever you want. And then here it is. We have the Lee we see today. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, I want to dive more into the the New York life, the Broadway life, and even like, you know what, how you got started in music, even the arts and different things like that. I'm so, I'm excited to see what the the genesis of who you are made you into the woman you're, we're currently talking to today. So listen, we have so many more great things here on the 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio Series XM Channel 140. Listen, don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. And we're back here on the 116 Live here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. Listen, Mia Evans here. And of course, I'm not here by myself. I hear Lee Vossi. Lee Vossi is here on the show (laughs) with me here today. Uh, So we're talking about uh, her life and just how she's able to be, of course, who you are today. Uh, I want to know what your upbringing was like. Uh, Mm -hmm. Did you grow up in church? How you got introduced to your faith? I want you to dive into a little bit of that really quick. Sure. So, um... Growing up kind of off and on in church, but really started going to church consistently when I was about 12. Okay. Um, But um, my parents are Christian. My mom actually would sing. She would make in her lullaby. She would make songs um, centered around God and like thanking God for the day. Um, So that was always kind of at the center of our family, even though we weren't consistently in church when I was like younger, younger. Um, But I always like I always loved when we went to church um, and I had a little kids Bible Mm -hmm. that my mom gave me. That was my favorite book. My, that Bible was my favorite book for like my whole childhood. And so, um, I always had like an interest in the Lord and, um, a grounding in, you know, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I was 14, um, I did the altar call at a Bible study I went to with my dad. Um, and yeah, like that was, that was always, um, uh, church was always like a, uh, an ambition in the house, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't necessarily something that I understood like relationship mm-hmm. with Christ um, until a little later on. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good. So when did, um, I'm curious about how even your relationship with your family and mm-hmm. like your siblings, you said like y'all sung a lot and mm-hmm. are your parents e- like musically inclined at all? Like, did they drive that into you guys yeah. or how did that come about? Like the, the music uh, ambitions. So I think both my parents really just love music. Um, and so there was a lot of music in the house, but um, my dad's mom, actually my grandmother is, very, very creative. She's a dancer. Mm. Um, and you know, that was always something that was encouraged for generations Mm. was to be creative and express yourself. Mm. And, um, but my parents are not musicians. Yeah. yeah. Um, my dad plays a really good air bass. Oh, great. (laughs) Shout out to dad. (laughs) And my mom really does do some really great lullabies, Mm. but, um, neither of them like were pursuing it as a career for themselves. Did you and your siblings, uh, have a a close bond like did Mm -hmm. music bring you guys together definitely yeah and so that was something that was always like that was a non-negotiable like we had to be close Mm. you know my mom was always very big on like you all are what y'all have listen in this life i never understood how people say like oh i don't get along with my siblings yeah i have three i have two other siblings too Mm -hmm. and my dad my sister is two years older than me my dad always said like if you don't have a best friend, I gave you a best friend. Right. And my siblings are tight. We have right. si- we had a movie night after this. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. So it's like it's I never understood that. So I love that you mm-hmm. I, when you say y'all were close and y'all sung, I can only imagine mm-hmm. what that what that bond was like. And even your brother, when it comes to Broadway and mm-hmm. being able like, yeah, she's gonna be in it. What was what was that Broadway experience like? Like auditioning? Mm-hmm. Did you were you excited about it? Did you think you were gonna get it? Talk about uh, what it was like being on Broadway at nine. Yeah. So Honestly, I don't know if I thought I was going to get it or not. That's a good question. I remember, though, that it was really hot mm. outside because we it was a long, like literally hundreds of girls out there. Yeah. Um, and it was in the middle of the summertime and it was really hot. Um, that's what I remember about the audition experience. Um, I think that at the time I really just loved performing like I didn't I wasn't necessarily because um, I was so young. I don't think that I had like a, an expectation for it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And that's something I've learned throughout all of my years like in entertainment is like you cannot have expectations for you just have to show up and do it right um but it's like god what god wants to happen is going to happen anyway um but so then when i booked it um it was exciting i I was always a very serious kid like 
my mom, my parents will tell you, like, I, I wasn't a big player. Like really? I was a very serious driven kid. And so, um, when I was cast, I was the youngest, um, of the, the group of cubs that got mm-hmm. cast at the time. Um, and I was the most, like, I was very serious, um, and very focused as a kid. And so it wasn't like a, um, it wasn't taking me outside of myself to be in like that professional environment, Mm -hmm. um, so early, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I learned a lot from it and, and, and take a lot of the things that I learned from it still to this day. What were some of the biggest takeaways you got from not just even just being on Broadway, but Mm -hmm. from being in submerged in the industry at a young age, what was that even like, like for you? Was Mm -hmm. it like a lot of pressure? Like, did you enjoy it? Or did you like, was it like, were you able to kind of like let loose and have fun? So Mm -hmm. what, what was that experience like just being in the industry from nine and then getting signed to a Lamina, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. (laughs) So, which is uh, insane to me. Mm -hmm. But, um, what was that like for you? Like, did you enjoy it more? Mm -hmm. Was it a lot of pressure on you? Talk about that. Not pressure. I was having a ball. Like I literally was like, I live in the life. Um, and I think my parents, did a really great job of like keeping me a kid like you know Mm -hmm. um and just being able to enjoy what I was doing um it was I think I think if anything pressure came from me like I always Mm -hmm. held myself to a really high standard and I don't know if it's because I'm the youngest like also my siblings are very high achieving too so it was just kind of like what we did you know what I'm saying and that's actually how I was raised like my it's funny my dad would you know if we came home with like all A's or something he's like yeah that's what you're supposed to do you know right so I was I was I was like that as a kid I would still have fun you know um and and just enjoy you know the moments and I went to school still like it's not like I didn't like it's not like I wasn't a kid in the Mm -hmm. middle of all of it yeah um but yeah it was just it was dope what was it um what were your biggest takeaways? I know I said that uh, Sorry. in the beginning yeah. part of the question. No, I, I feel like I gave you a, a, a lot <laughs> just then. But um, what was your biggest takeaway being in the industry at such a young age? You said you observed a lot yeah. and you learned a lot. Um, probably biggest takeaway, um, be kind to everyone. Mm. You know? Yeah. Probably biggest. And also, like, being in a company like Disney, um, that that was a part of the the company culture right was it was like a very just you know kind environment um and just honoring people around you respecting everybody um also just being a part of theater Mm -hmm. just generally right like everybody is uh, is is so necessary for the show to go on right like nobody here is more important than anybody Mm -hmm. you know um very similar to like a team Mm -hmm. right like it's 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 its own version of a team exactly and so um that was probably my biggest takeaway is just respect everybody um and and honor them for all of their contributions i want to talk about your parents a little bit Mm because your parents where uh, I was reading just how supportive mm-hmm. they are. And sometimes yeah. you have parents who they say just little things like uh, pipe dreams and things like yeah. that. But then you have parents like yours that are like, oh, no, let's go after it. Yeah. And like, I'll have your support. What was it like uh, embracing that uh, support at a young age? And then mm-hmm. even now being able to have their support where you are in your career with music and every, all of your endeavors. Mm -hmm. So I think at a young age, I didn't really get it. Mm. Right. Um, but I did understand that our family was sacrificing for this. Right. Mm. Because when I went to the Lion King, like the whole family didn't go right. Like it was me and my mom and my sister for the first six months and my dad and brother stayed in North Carolina Mm. and that they would make trips to come up and, you know, see me and stuff or, um, uh, And then my sister ended up um, leaving after the first six months. So then it was just me and my mom and in New York and then my brother, sister and dad in North Carolina. So I I recognized the family's Mm. sacrifice for that. Um, And at times I felt bad about it, Mm. to be real. Like, I, you know, I felt bad that I was kind of the reason, the cause of it. Right. Um, But I'm very blessed that everybody understood kind of like, you know, what God was doing through it. Um, And then as an adult. Actually, I had uh, before I moved back to Atlanta, um, I went to my dad and I said, Dad, you know, um, and this was before I had the word about music. Right. Yeah. Um, But I said, Dad, you know, I'm at a place where I'm the most at peace I've ever been, but I'm the most lost Mm -hmm. I've ever been. Right. I don't know what I'm doing for real. Like, you know, my mental health is good. Like everything is kind of balancing out. But like I'm lost and I don't know what to do about it. 
And he was like, you know, I always, I'm always going to let you do what you're going to do for your journey, right? You have to go on your journey. But I always thought that you stopped doing music too abruptly, right? Like nobody stops, nobody does what you've done for as long as you've done it. Yeah. And like just stops. Like obviously you love it. Like just try it. Just pick up, you know, your equipment and like see see what comes from it, you know? So um, actually my dad was a huge part of just kind of planting that seed. I think God used him that day in that conversation yeah. to yeah. even make me start thinking about music again. So the the theme of their support, like is it goes beyond just like, you know, making me feel good mm -hmm. as, a, as a kid or like, you know, my parents are cool. It's like, they have been so, um, they have also been obedient in their support of it, you know, and the way that they've kind of, um, that they've guided me when I've needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about, uh, cause you said something that I thought was important that we all went through that good old panorama, that, uh, <laughs> that pandemic was something special. And I yeah. can't lie to you. There are days where I think like, did we really go through that? Like we, were we all yeah. like awake? It felt like that? a fever like, dream, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and you were talking about how that just, what told it that have on you? Um, mentally and mm -hmm. then even in a, a creative sense as well. Mm -hmm. So prior to the pandemic, I was already struggling with my mental health. Like I was already in a place of just like imbalance. Mm -hmm. um, and when the pandemic happened, because then I, I was also using um, kind of session hopping and hustling mm -hmm. to like uh, distract myself from mm -hmm. like what was already kind of brewing in my mental health space. And then when the pandemic happened and, you know, the studio shut down for a while, like all the, you know, everything stopped. I had no choice but to sit there in the struggle for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think the pandemic didn't create anything new, but it, if anything, it just like exacerbated what was already there and like made me have to really reckon with it mm -hmm. and like make a choice whether I wanted to do something to like fix it yeah, yeah, <laughs> or yeah. not. Yeah. So, yeah. So what, what got you through that time? Um, uh, initially therapy mm, shout out to therapy shout out to therapy i was really blessed to have a therapist that was really holistic in her approach to healing and um that relationship encouraged me to get back in my word mm -hmm. and have the clarity um to actually want to hear god's voice again yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying and really like give up my kind of rebellion because mm -hmm. if i'm honest with myself a lot of what i was suffering from was like a product of like i was just rebelling and like wanting to do what i wanted to do and it just wasn't working out so yeah. you know um and so um so yeah therapy was really really instrumental in that and then um i think when i got to a place probably probably like uh, like October of 2021 because mm -hmm. I moved back July of 2021 to North Carolina probably around October was where I started to see like oh like I this is this is getting better mm -hmm. and I thought that it would never right like I was in a in a in a kind of cycle where extreme highs extreme lows mm -hmm. and um, I was starting to see myself kind of balance out um, and that was a combination of my faith and therapy yeah I, I shout out one therapy because uh, in the church where we think mm -hmm. some people think low mm -hmm. of therapy. Yeah. And I love that you said that when you had a therapist and it brought you back to your work, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And people think so, so that they think that if you're in therapy, something's wrong with mm -hmm. you and you should just pray it away. Yeah. But the fact that you still had God mm -hmm. and you still had a, he led you to a resource like therapy was able to even help get you out of a, one of the most unique times in the world that right. we like, you know, ever saw. Yeah. So um, I think that's beautiful. So when we come back, I want to talk about the music okay. <laughs> uh, because when I tell you I've been jamming this week, y'all, and I, I, I feel we have the perfect, of course, the creator and the mindset uh, behind those amazing tracks. We're going to talk about, oh, I can't wait to dive into the music uh, right back here on the 116 Live here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. Listen, don't go anywhere. We have Lee Fossey here. We'll be right back. And we are back here on the 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. As always, we have Lee Vossi here on the show. And listen, we're going to talk about the music. Okay, listen. <laughs> Y'all, um, Lee is an amazing artist, and Thank she's you. been making so much noise. I want to dive into one song specifically, and that's Teach Me. And 
I've just seen so many different. You've gotten so many shares. Mm -hmm. I was on YouTube the other day and you came up in my recommendations and I saw you were at like almost half a million views for Teach Me. And it's just like, I'm curious to what makes you think people resonate so much with that song. Um, based on the comments, <laughs> right, <laughs> and the DMs, um, I think people really just have, there's been kind of like a, it's time to balance out like the market place mm -hmm. of like what we sing about and how we sing about love. Mm. And um, I think people have just been really resonating with the vulnerability um, of the song yeah. where it's like, I need help here. This person is not a bad person. Um, but I just don't understand this person right now. Um, and, uh, I think it's just really hitting home for a lot, for both men and women. No, for sure. Cause mm -hmm. listen, Laura, I'm not perfect, <laughs> but neither is this man you didn't get. Right. Right. So like, I felt a lot of pe a lot of people can resonate with that. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said even relationships, because I feel like sometimes people, um, Christian artists specifically, we, mm -hmm. um, they try to stem away from relationships mm -hmm. and as if it's like a bad thing yeah and i truly just don't think it is um how do you what do you think what are your what's your take on that like just bringing in relationships and uh -huh. bringing that vulnerability uh, the vulnerable side of relationships like do you feel like it's necessary just speak on that a little bit i definitely feel like it's necessary look god is love yeah and created love and created us to love each other right to be right. a reflection of him mm -hmm. to one another so like with teach me, it really was just like, I wasn't even writing that for an audience. That was a real life conversation that I had with God, yeah. um, where I was having a situation in my relationship where we just weren't understanding each other. And I, I, I was praying about it yeah. and, um, the Holy spirit instructed me to not pray to change this person that God created mm -hmm. to fit my selfish needs, mm -hmm. but um, rather for me to pray to understand this person that God created as a bar in this specific way on purpose yeah. in this, like God created me in a specific way on purpose, like he created all of us. And so that was a real just moment um, from prayer that, um, that ended up becoming what teach me is as a song. So um, I think that, uh, you know, I would love I would love for there to be more conversations about love um, with God at the center yeah. and um, for music to kind of be a place for that to reach people. Yeah, because I, I don't think it's anything wrong for us to be able to have songs like that. But mm -hmm. I think when we try to take God out of it mm -hmm. and uh, but one thing another thing I love is the fact that you said how it was real. And this was a yeah. very real conversation you had in mm -hmm. um I always say what comes from the heart reaches the heart. Mm. So because th that's what came from your true, authentic heart's cry, mm -hmm. so many other people, men, women alike, were able to resonate with that song. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was talking to Lee off air, y'all. And I was talking about this voice she got. And I was like, what training have you had? And <laughs> she would say how like, well, basically she was just kind of born this no, way. No, no. Um, <laughs> but no, so talk a little bit about um, how you even like... Uh, Cause I don't know, is it something about your 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 voice? Where you say you, you used to belt out songs, and mm -hmm. you had something about your voice that's like it's light, but yet it it holds weight and power. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever have to like grow into your voice and like mm -hmm. you know coming from theater and then going into like you know your own artistry where you don't yeah. have to? I I went to a performing arts high school, so okay. I know what comes with like singing a, a, in theater in front of an audience opposed yeah. to like you know just uh, singing. I guess regular in a sense. Uh, what was it like being able to adjust your voice from theater to mm -hmm. and then who you want your uh, being Lee Vossi into your music and uh, for what you want your career to be. Mm -hmm. So actually this, I love this question. Nobody's ever asked me this before, I think. But so actually when I first started coming down to Atlanta when I was 16 um, to record my own songs that I had written was mm -hmm. the first time that I learned that you sing different on stage than you do in a, recording yeah, session yeah, yeah, in a yeah, booth okay. right and so that was really where I first started to understand like oh okay like let me you know chill on the vibrato a little bit let me approach this a little softer because the mic is right here I'm not singing out you know mm -hmm. so that was kind of when I my first experience of realizing that um but ultimately I think that 
um, it, there had to be a time as a, as a songwriter where I found my own voice, because like you mentioned, like with theater, like you're singing a song that somebody else has written, Mm -hmm. um, for a role that somebody else has written. Right. Um, and so I had to figure out like the way that I wanted to share my stories. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, like specifically with this new music that's coming out, it's very intimate. Like I'm literally just like, these songs were written like in my bedroom, like yeah. literally from me to God. Um, and cause again, I didn't even have a plan for like what the releases of this music would look like, or even a- an expectation of it being received at all. Um, and it was just coming from a place of that vulnerability. And so I think that especially with the approach to the way that I'm recording these songs right now, um, it's to really kind of, kind of illustrate that, that like, yeah. this is really just coming from the heart and it's intimate. Yeah, I'm speaking of coming from the heart, uh, I love the lyrics of your will. Talk about what the inspiration was behind those uh, lyrics for that song. Well, thank you. Um, but uh, I was actually reading the Bible and um, I was it was one of those days where um, I was just kind of so I'm, I'm on a, a journey to read the Bible in a year. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it's like a 52 week like guided study. Right. Um, but um, so I'm reading it every day. But this was what a day where I was like, hmm, let me just like see where I yeah, land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I landed um, on first Peter 410, which is where that first lyric came from in the verse. And then I also saw that it correlated to Matthew 10 right where the speaking of light what we learn in the darkness right and so i was like huh it made me think about my mental health journey about things that i had learned when i was in the darkness um and now things that i want to shed a light on yeah. um to maybe help somebody else come out of the darkness and um what really did that was me giving my will up yeah. and wanting to live according to god's will for my life um so yeah, so then your will just kind of ended up writing itself. And I actually <laughs> was sitting there on my couch um, writing it and recording it. And um, when the first melody started coming out, I was like, really God? Like, <laughs> I literally was like, it's gonna be like that. Cause your will kind of ended up writing itself after yeah. I got that inspiration from those Bible verses. Um, so yeah, your will is one of my favorites. Listen, I love, uh, I love when the word, uh, when the word can be able to, speak through music you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. because you can you can hear that Mm y'all you hear that and um not only did it sound so rich but yet even also the word inside of it was so rich um when it comes to your will there was a lyric you said and I have it right here it says can you make sense of what I've been through Mm -hmm. did you ever have like a moment like that personally where you're kind of like lord you got to make some sense out of this, Girl. you know, like d- talk about that. Did you Girl. ever have a moment where that kind of hit you where that was able to come through in the music? Yes. <laughs> I probably had like <laughs> three years of my life. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> like this is none of this is making yeah. sense. Like yeah. I was really living in like a chaotic headspace for probably like three years of my life and just like making bad decisions, like making bad relationships, like just like not, healthy Mm -hmm. you know um and ultimately you know god doesn't ever end on a negative right and so um i'm in a place now where like everything has made sense like all of it makes sense and now i'm glad that i've that i went through all of it even though it it was it was tough because um god is gonna always get his glory yeah so um to your question did i yes for about three years (laughs) i was asking that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, so you said something, and I got to ask you is about this new music you're talking about. So okay. um, where, what can you tell us about what you have coming up for the rest of the year? Like, is there, can you tell us about what, if there's a direction you're going in, mm-hmm. something, a song you're excited about that you're relating, you're waiting to release? Um, just tell us, what, what else can we expect? Because you already start off the year off on, yeah. a, on the right track. Yeah, you know, Mia, there's a lot that I'm excited about this yeah. year, given the way that God has started it out. There's a lot of things that are kind of shifting and pivoting. You know, we've been really plan um, oriented, like how you, how you mentioned, you know, like the consistent posting and, you know, content, 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 like that's on purpose. Yeah. Um, but now we're having to shift some things um, given the fact that 
so many people have been introduced to this music yeah, now. Right. Um, so all I can really say is I'm just excited to see God continue to work and like give me some cool song ideas. This past week, I um, started writing again and um, there's just going to keep being more music. And I yeah. hope that it just like continues to just glorify God and and move the way that he wants it to move um, because we can plan all we want to, but ultimately he going to make happen what's supposed to happen. Exactly. Um, but I'm really, really excited about this year. And yeah, um, yeah. we're excited, man. <laughs> I'm excited. I know um, I've, I've definitely locked, locked in and a lot of other are uh, other people are too. Um, you said something I want to ask about um, you. So are you still reading the Bible within mm-hmm. a year? Yeah. How has that been? You know, it's been really fun. Like, yeah. so I've never, I've never read the Bible in a guided capacity. So are you doing like the U version thing or you have like a, a book or something like that? It's a book. I forget who the author is, but it's a 52 week, like a uh, guided Bible journey um, that like also has like questions for you to like mm. ponder on and things yeah, like I love that. that. And so um, it's been really fun. I'm really leaning into the Old Testament. This morning, I just finished Second Samuel. Okay. So it like it takes you through like um, books, but it also will jump you around every now and then because, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes the Old Testament can can be a little heavy, yes. you know, Girl. So like it's like at the right time. She'll be like, no, go read Psalms, go read Proverbs, you know, um, yeah. but it's been I've had a lot of revelations and really learning a lot about god's nature would share, from share some of those revelations um uh, a lot so i guess i'll start from from the beginning genesis um i had a kind of an aha moment where god came to um cain right before he killed his brother mm-hmm. and god said Um, and I'm paraphrasing, but sin's desire will be for you, Mm. but you must master it. Mm -hmm. And then next verse, he kills his brother. Mm. Right. And for me, it made me think about like how God will try to give you like, Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Cause he knows what you're what's coming your way, yeah. right? He knows what the enemy is trying to send to you, trying to, you know, get you to do. Um, and he, we know how that story ends, right? But then when you see like the pattern of the importance of obedience throughout these people's lives, yeah, that's the other thing. We often talk about people in the Bible, like their characters. Yeah, these yeah. These are real life people who had these real life experiences mm-hmm. with God and these real life consequences of disobedience. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's this pattern here. Like God is very, very consistent, yeah. you know? Um, and he loves us so much. And that's why obedience is good. It's not to be restrict, you know, uh, uh, to restrict us or to stop us from having a good life. It's actually so that we can have a good life and yeah. have like everlasting life yeah. with him, you know? Um, so there's been a lot, but right now that's the, that's the thing that's coming to mind is just like the pattern of the way that obedience is really for your good. It's yeah. not for God to be a bully or to, to keep you. It's like, please, like <laughs> please. He, he loves you so much. Just listen to him, please. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, it's been a really cool journey. I'm on week 18. Yeah. So I'm almost, yeah, I'm almost halfway. That's so good. I did, um, I've been diving in a lot more to, I, I did the, uh, I did a U version one with the Bible in the year, mm-hmm. but girl, I'm in the old Testament now too. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in Isaiah. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you God was ready, we know with us. Yeah. And, um, but it's, it's, I wanted to ask you that because even aside from, like, of course, we talk about the, you know, music career, things mm-hmm. like that. But um, you live this life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you live a 116 life where, mm-hmm. you know, there wouldn't be any music, anything that you do with because God influences that. So um, I'm I'm in, I'm encouraged even by you uh, t- sharing the you studying the Bible and things like that. Um, I'm so happy we're able to have you on before you go. Do you have any just like any any final words of encouragement last final things you want to leave with everybody listening 
Hmm. Words of encouragement, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I would just encourage anyone to, um, if you're going through anything that you're struggling with, whether it's mentally, with your family, relationships, um, trust God to get you to the other side Mm -hmm. of it. Cause there's always another side of it, especially when you like allow him to be at the center of it and lead it. Um, and life is worth living, especially when you have him on your side yeah. and as your guide. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. That's good. Now for people who are like, okay, now she talked about music, all these things. I like her. <laughs> I want to follow. I want to tap into the music. How can people be able to keep up with you? Sure. So I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Lily Vasi. Um, L-E-E-L-E-E-V-A-S-I. That's how you spell it. And um, on YouTube, just type in Levasi. Um, and Spotify, Apple Music, everything. Um, you can find my music everywhere. So yes. listen, y'all, y'all like tap it. in, please. <laughs> listen, the year, I know the year start off right, and she got more for us. So listen, make sure y'all are tapping in to everything lily has got going on. And make sure you guys, of course, be back here next week here on the 116 Life. Of course, y'all, I'm Mia Evans. I'm here with Lee Vossi here on the 116 Life, here on Holy Culture Radio, Series XM, Channel 140. Thank y'all again for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you guys next week.